Hi, Quadcopter101 here, and before we get into the review of the XSA12W, I state in the video, in the following review, that it does not have a micro SD card slot. I was, I was wrong. There is a micro SD card slot, but to access it, to access it, <laughs> it's hidden. Okay, let me show you. You grab, put your fingernail under both sides of these uh, antenna support knobs right here, and push forward, and you'll notice that the camera pops out. It's a module. It's a modular camera. And there's the micro SD card slot. You just put your plug your micro SD card in there and then you can record in HD. And uh, all you need to do is slide the camera, you know, after putting your card in there, <laughs> move the te antennas out of the way and then you can easily slide it back in the camera back into place and plug it back into place so that's how it's done it does have a micro sd card it's just hidden or sd card slot it's just hidden and you have to access it you just got to pop out the camera and pop the camera back in you know slide the card in and then pop the camera back in again okay that's it so let's get into the flight of this thing hope you enjoyed this flight Good morning, Quadcopter101 here, and before we get started, let's get the shout-out out of the way. Today's shout-out goes to Scooby Don't. Scooby Don't was the first to say first on one of my recent videos, and this one's a shout-out, so congratulations, Scooby. So what do I got for you today? This is another folding drone, as you can see here, but this one's special, folks. I've been waiting for this one to come out. This is the Vizio XS-A12W. What's so special about the Vizio? It's, you're going to say, yeah, it's just another folding Wi-Fi quadcopter. Well, yes and no. This is uh, come, you know, a follow-on to the popular uh, Vizio uh, that I've reviewed previously, but there's something special about this Vizio. The XSA12W includes GPS, so now we have a GPS-controlled drone. With that GPS, you have Follow Me, and you also have Waypoint capability, true Waypoint capability from this drone. Um, it's a Wi-Fi FPV flyer, but there's one thing about it. It's 5G Wi-Fi, 802.11 AC Wi-Fi. Now, not everybody has 802.11 AC Wi-Fi. You know, not all phones have that. So before consider considering purchasing this drone, I strongly recommend that you verify that your phone that you intend to use is indeed 802.11 AC Wi-Fi capable. You can do that. That's very easy. Just type the name of your phone in Google along with the, the numbers 802.11 and see what comes up. You might be, see 802.11 ABGN. That's not going to work with this. You want to see 802.11 AC Wi-Fi. Okay? Uh, enough on that. Let's go other, over other things of this. This does have a 720p HD camera. Unfortunately, <laughs> the app that you use with this, and hold on, let me get the name of that app, uh, the XSW GPS app. When you use it, and you select 720p in the menu the app crashes so for today's flight i have to fly in uh 480p 480p resolution that's low resolution vga resolution and again the reason being it's not the drone's fault it's the app the app hasn't been updated yet to include uh 720p i don't think they checked it <laughs> to make sure that the 720p in the app works because every time i select 720p in the app the app crashes even though you know this has 720p capability, uh, hopefully that, that's that's an easy fix. So in the in the future, I, I know Vizio is going to come around to fix that problem. Other thing I don't like about this that I haven't mentioned yet is there is no micro SD card slot. You can't record the video directly to a micro SD. You got to record the video to your phone via Wi-Fi. What does that mean? That means you're going to get lag. Okay. You're going to get some lag, but the you know since this is uh, 5G Wi-Fi, you're not going to see as much lag as you would see with say a um, uh, 2.4 gigahertz Wi-Fi. You know 802.11 BGN. Uh, those create a lot of lag. Uh, 5G Wi-Fi, since it's operating on a different frequency from the transmitter, they don't interfere with each other, so you get uh, less lag and you get much greater range, possibly out to the 200 meters or so for FPV range. Okay, one other thing about this drone, it is powered by quite a large battery. If I can get it out, hold on. Today, the battery wants to stick in there. There we go. <laughs> it is a 1200 milliamp hour, or it says 1800 milliamp hour, I'm sorry, 3.8 volt battery. Okay, 1800 milliamp hour should give us quite a bit of uh, flight time. Additionally, it is a LIHV battery, which means... 
yeah, it's uh, vo nominal voltage is 3.85 volts, and I think it's max voltage would be 4.35 volts when you top it off. That gives you a little more power in a standard LiPo battery, so you can fly a little bit longer. Okay, let's go over the controller. It's a pretty looking controller that goes with this, and all the buttons are well labeled. This is your rates button for very speed of the, of the quadcopter. This does have circle me, I forgot to mention. <laughs> you activate it by pressing this button here or pressing the circle button in your app. You can take a photo by pressing this button here. Uh, start and stop video by pressing this button here. Emergency stop by pressing this button here. Headless mode is included by pressing that button here. And return to home and landing is included by pressing that button here. And this button on the lower far right is for doing your compass calibration, which is very important. This is a GPS bird. You need to do a compass calibration before each flight, I recommend. So let's open up this app, XSW GPS app, and start up the drone and see how it flies. So hope you enjoy this flight. Three, two, one. Okay, you start it up by moving the on-off switch to on. And that should bring it up. Then you go with your transmitter and up and down to bind it. And to enter into compass calibration mode, you press this button here. And all lights should be blinking right now on the bottom. We're gonna check that. Both red lights are blinking and both green lights are blinking. Let me go over in the shade to show you this compass calibration. We'll go over here, hold on. We'll do it in the shade so you can see these lights because they're very important. Okay, when all the lights are blinking, that means it's waiting for compass calibration to start. And we'll go over here, and you can see green blinking and red blinking. And at this point, we wanna do uh, about three to four clockwise turns until the green blinking lights become solid. One, two, three. Or actually, it's the red blinking lights become solid and the green blinking lights are flashing. At this point, we put the nose of the drone downward and turn it until the green blinking lights also become solid. And now they're solid. So the compass calibration is done. You know, this is important to do for most GPS drones before every flight. Um, that avoids or lessens the chance for toilet bowl effect which can get worse as you attempt to fly with TB. TB, toilet bowl effect, is where the drone circles around like it's going down a toilet. <laughs> and that just gets worse and progressively worse until you crash. Okay, this is the XSW GPS app, available on Google Play and iTunes. And uh, you can click that center button there that says GPS to open up the app. And we see we got FPV signal. And we do have sufficient uh, satellites to fly right now. we got 13 which is telling us we, we do have GPS GLONASS on this system here. Look up, looking on the upper bar there, you can see all the uh, different um, telemetry features this has, altitude, distance, speed, uh, number of satellites, lat long, uh, pit roll pitch yaw, battery signal, and also received FPV signal there under HD. Clicking on the settings button in the upper right there, uh, we can see parameters we can set here, default height of waypoint, maximum height of waypoint, speed of waypoint, Maximum state time at waypoint, which I have set to zero, and maximum radius of waypoint. I'm going to adjust that to 120 meters since this is a GPS flyer. It can go out to 120, hitting OK. Um, we're selecting the map. You can select standard, satellite, or hybrid. Unfortunately, it stays in standard for some reason. Even if you click these, it does not change <laughs> to other maps. It just stays in standard resolution. And additionally, to use this, you have to first connect uh, to uh, Google Maps with this app before starting the drone, and that I, I haven't done. So unfortunately, we won't be able to use the Google Maps portion. Um, they're cutting grass here, so there's going to be some noise in the background. Okay, we are ready to go, actually, here. Um, let's start off by starting the video camera and uh, starting the motors by down and in. Down and in starts the motors. Video camera started. Let's give it some throttle to take off and let's check our stability first. The very first thing we want to check. Going up a bit higher too. Again, we're looking for toilet bowl effect where it's moving around and it's not doing it. We got 
you know, the compass calibrations were done very well. And with that in mind, I can lower this a bit and say, I like my shirt today, folks. Huh? San Diego. <laughs> Shows where I've been. Okay. Um, first things first, let's check out its range. And we are recording in 480p. But let's see if we can go over. I like to always try to go over to the skate park off in the distance there. I'm going to go in the shade too while I'm doing such. Heading toward the skate park. And video is recording. Skate parks. Skate park is about, uh, I don't know, 150, 200 meters or so. Right now it's set to feet. So three, 100 meters is 330 feet about, 328 feet. Okay, going out bun. So we're 100 meters away. Still going out bun. And the FPV signal has become very choppy at 425 feet. So 442 feet, it's becoming very choppy. And my recorded video is going to be likewise very choppy. Let's see if I could go a little farther. Pushing out a little further. I can still see it up there, by the way. 510 feet. And 555 feet. And I'm going to stop it right there. And it's become very, very choppy. Let's turn to the right a bit. Let's turn it to the right. Let's head over to these trees. Pushing forward. And I'm going to go over to that point there. And I'm keeping the flat end of my phone pointed toward the drone. The reason I'm doing that is to try to get best signal. We're almost 300 meters out right now. Turning to the right a bit. We're about close to 300 meters. Or 200 meters, 200 meters. And I'm going to call it quits from there, folks. I just want to reach 200 meters. I don't want to get, go too far out. Well, let's go out into the baseball field. So, And I'm starting to lose signal right about, well, it's still going forward. Over 200 meters. So it's got reasonably good distance. It's losing signal now. It's saying, come back. It's losing signal from the transmitter. So I am going to hit return to home. And it should be coming back home. And there it is, coming home. So that's the end of, it wasn't the end of the FPV signal, it was the end of uh, control signal. My uh, Vizio controller is telling me that uh, it's, you know, through telemetry that it was losing signal from the drone that it couldn't control it anymore. So now it's coming back home. Let's see how accurate its return to home and landing is. I see it up in the sky there, it comes back overhead. Let me tilt my head up, flying overhead bringing itself back automatically and it's slowing down here over the trees I hope it goes a little further <laughs> and let's see how close it comes down to the landing pad and we're already at about 50% uh, power uh, I want to do a follow me once it gets down closer to the ground I'm going to stop the uh, landing when it gets down to about my level <laughs> is it going to come down is it going to drop the air codes Reducing power, starting to drop. Let's see about how close it'll get. There's the pad. There's the drone. And stopping. Stopping, return to home, right? That's good enough. <laughs> right there. Okay, you can press the return to home button. That's, that aborts the return to home if it has reception from the transmitter. Okay, what I want to do next, we're going to hit this track or tracking button. And it looks like it's adjusting its position. Let's see how its auto tracking works. Is it follow me or is it just tracking? Tracking just turns the drone in your direction. Uh, follow me, the drone will actually go with you. It doesn't look like it's, no, it's following me. It's following me. <laughs> Let me go around this post here. Old man running. I don't get a heart attack here. <laughs> it's doing a good job, actually, of follow me. Okay, that's its follow me ability. Pretty cool. Let's go to this position here, and we're going to break out of follow me. 
and go over into the field. Let me break out of follow me. How do you do that? It doesn't want to break out of follow me. It's stuck in follow me mode, so how about if I hit orbit? Will it break out and if I hit orbit mode? No, orbit doesn't seem to want to stop it either. So what I'm going to do, folks, is I'm going to land it. <laughs> We're going to start over from the landing pad. Because I want to try the orbit mode and the waypoint if I can get, get enough uh, power out of the battery. Okay, I restarted the app, restarted the quadcopter, hitting record again, and uh, starting the motors down and in. And let's try the takeoff, giving it throttle. Okay, okay, the next thing I want to try is orbit. And hitting the orbit, let's, see, let's go up a bit higher to do this, and then hitting the orbit button. And let's see what it does. I just hit the orbit button, and I'm curious what it's going to do. It's coming overhead, flies overhead. And then what? <laughs> then it rotates. I got a feeling I'm supposed to give it some pitch and roll to get it to orbit. Pushing an icon. And is it orbiting? Yeah, it's not orbiting. <laughs> so the orbit has some work. Uh, I'm not sure what it's doing. It's flying over there now. I hit the orbit button. Is it going to rotate? Is it going to turn? That's what I'm curious about. Well, I don't know. Well, now it's turning. It's turning. And is it, do I have to give it, tell it which direction to turn? I guess I do. I push the pitch roll stick to the right, and now it's orbiting. Can I increase the speed of that by holding it down a little more? Apparently, yes. That's how you do it, folks. You have to tell it to do such. Okay, it's telling me I got low battery power. Okay, let's come down a little lower. Look at that thing orbit. It does it real fast, too. <laughs> okay. Before we go any further, let's stop that orbit. Orbit is stopped. Let's hit the uh, waypoint. And zoom in where I'm at right now. And let's do one quick waypoint before we end it here. One. Okay, you got to draw, draw. It doesn't let you do that. I'll have to do that in a future video, folks, because we're almost out of power. <laughs> so, let's call it quits here for now. Going back to regular mode. And let's go over the landing pad. Actually, let's see what happens when it runs out of battery. Is it going to return to home, or is it going to land itself? It lands itself. <laughs> so that's it, folks. That's the flight time and you get a telemetry warning on your controller. So the only thing I didn't get to try today was waypoints. Let's turn this off now. It was waypoint flying. Uh, I'll try to get that in a future video. Hopefully they'll update that app too so I can get 720p video right now instead of 480p like I'm getting. Um, that shouldn't be a hard fix for Vizio to do at all. And hopefully they should do that very quickly. So hope you enjoyed this flight of the XS-A12W, this Quadcopter 101. Signing out.